Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today I will be taking a look at several questions that you guys have posted on the Wix Wiz community forum, which is on the new wixwiz.com website. So don't go to my old website and post on that forum anymore, uh, but come here and post your questions. And today we're going to be taking a look at three questions that were posted on this forum that I think will be informative and we can learn a lot from. So let's get started. So the first question that I will be answering today is from Desiree Weiss, posted 11 hours ago. And the title is Help Creating a Search Bar with a Table. Um, so Desiree has some issues here with the code and also kind of a general question about uh, if this kind of setup would work with a table and not only with a repeater. Uh, so I'll start by answering that second point uh, and maybe do a little demonstration soon of that as well. Um, so there's a difference between data and how you're displaying the data. So the data comes back from a collection or from an external source in one way. And the conditions for displaying data, so whether it's a repeater or a table, are or some other element are different depending on that element. And so technically you can display any data either in a repeater or a table or using just regular you know, text or images or whatever it is that you're using, uh, but you might have to manipulate it in a slightly different way to present the data using a different element. And I'll try and explain that a little bit more, but in general, the answer to that question is, Yes, uh, I can do. I can tell you that even without even looking at the details of the question. If you tell me you have data and you ask me if I can present it in a table as well as a repeater, the answer will be uh, yes. Um, the only caveat to that would be uh, if the element doesn't support a certain data type. So, for example, you know, if a table didn't support images, which I'm pretty sure it does, I would have to double check the documentation about that but uh, then you would not be able to display images in a table. But if your data was just text, for example, then you definitely wouldn't have an issue. Uh, and then really depending on the type of data, each type of data can be linked to different elements uh, in Wix. So that's the answer to that second part. And now I'm just gonna dive into the code. Um, and uh, Desiree says that, I hope I'm, uh, I hope I'm say, pronouncing the name right. Um, if you're watching this, then you can let me know. Uh, so this, uh, okay, so Wix has both item and item data underlined in red saying cannot find name, not sure what I'm doing wrong. And here we have a snapshot of the code. So this is really helpful uh, in terms of helping you with your issues. So if you're posting to the forum, uh, you're asking a question, I mean, giving screenshots like these, giving the code snippet, uh, giving a link to the live site, okay, all that is really, really important because otherwise it's going to be really hard to help you. Uh, we can even check out the, the live site where it is. Okay, so this, okay, so here we have the table. <laughs> so it looks like uh, uh, Desiree might have figured it out because there's a table here, but I'll still uh, go ahead and try and answer. Uh, and answer that question. Let's see if the search is working. Yeah, it looks like the search is working. So I'm happy that <laughs> Desiree uh, figured it out, but let me just take a look here at the code because maybe it's something that we can all learn for, learn from, sorry. Um, so if we take a look here, then you can see that some of the code is underlined in red. And if you're not familiar with the Velo IDE, then, uh, or pretty much any IDE, then, Underlined red means not good. <laughs> so that means that you have some kind of error with your code and you can also use these red lines on the side, to kind of identify where inside the code the red lines might be. If you have a lot of code written out, then that can be very helpful. Um, and in this case, so just at a glance, uh, I can kind of tell that the issue is with this parentheses. So let me just copy over the code snippet over here because that'll make it a little easier. And I'm going to copy it into just a random site that I have uh, here just for 
this purpose. So I'm just going to copy the code and paste it right over here. And I'm going to zoom in. So some of us, some of the issues that we have here is that we don't actually have this button and this uh, and this repeater and this search query input. So that's why these are flashing in red, because if you don't have the actual element here on your Wix website, then that'll be red. Uh, but the real issue that uh, this person was having on their site actually has to do with this function. And it's basically because over here, uh, there's one extra parenthesis. So this parenthesis here is supposed to be closing this um, like the parameters for this on item ready function. Uh, and this is extra here. So if I just get rid of that, then you see all those red lines disappear. And I can also click format and now the document is formatted as it should be. Okay, so that's uh, one issue uh, that was definitely stopping this code from running uh, as it was supposed to. Um, and let's take a look and see if we can identify any other issues with the code. Okay, so query equals to search query input dot value. So search query input here would be the text input, which um, which we get the query from. And here we have title query equals Wix data. So here, it looks like there is a query that's not being used. Um, so I'm not sure what the purpose of this query was, especially because this query is very similar to this one. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar, so uh, when using Wix query, what you can do is you can build a query without actually calling the query. Okay, so this find keyword here at the end, uh, that's what actually calls the query and makes makes the query to the Wix uh, to Wix data. And if you just build out a query like this, it's something that you can store for later. So you can take this title query and then later on somewhere in your code, you know, you write a lot of code. And then down here you can have um, const result equals await equals await title query dot find. And yeah, it's probably because of all this that that's not working. Yeah, so um, so that's kind of how you can build a query and then uh, you know call it later on. And this is especially useful if you're stringing several queries together. So for example, you could have title query, but you could also have let's say um, name query, and this would be name. And then you can do here title query dot or, and then you can have here a name query, and then basically it'll include results that either match the title or match the name, um, and that might be what this person was trying to go for in the long run, and then maybe got confused or got gave up halfway, and then just went with this. Um, so then this I'm not sure what this line here is doing exactly, so I'm just going to comment it out for now. And here we have a query to the database, and we have the mock data, which is the items from the query, and then we're sending that data to the repeater. Um, so this looks like it's something that should work. Um, yeah, other than that, on click search or on input, input okay so basically they want to run this search when the search button is clicked or when the query uh, is in, actually input into the um into that search bar uh, i know it's kind of you have to think of it in abstract way because we don't actually have the elements here um here technically this could have been run in the same manner so this could have just been search here okay um yeah, but otherwise it looks um, good. Okay, so that's probably what your issue was. Uh, and then in terms of turning this into a table, uh, which I see that you did manage, um, but basically you would have to take this data and instead of sending it to a repeater, you would have to set it up using the rows and columns of a table in order to pass that data uh, into a table. Um, so, 
yeah, I don't know if you're still having an issue, then I hope this helps you solve it. And if anybody is having a similar uh, problem, then you can uh, you can hopefully solve it using this. Uh, so let me check out some of the other posts that we have here in the forum. Uh, using Google Sheet data to fill a repeater. That I can take a look at maybe. I don't know if we have enough time for that today. Uh, property map does not exist on type media item. My code const... Oops. Uh, I just bought a new uh I just bought a new webcam and it uh I guess the weight of it is kind of figure out exactly how to position my uh laptop so that doesn't happen. But that's real life. Sometimes those things happen so um, it's in the video. Um uh, okay, cool. So we have here um yeah, so error. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to do is, again, uh, if you're sharing code, it's better to put it like separately in a code snippet just so it's a little clear. Also, if you have snapshots, uh, screenshots, sorry, or if you have even like open up the console on the side and, and take a screenshot of that. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can possibly figure it out by just copying over this code. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of all the code that we have here in the onReady function. How zoomed in I want to perfect. Cool. And I'm going to format that. And I'm going to move this down a line. And OK, so basically uh, what this person is doing, oh, what's the name of the person? Sorry, Harry. What Harry is doing is uh, they have the a product, a Wix product. Um, they didn't really give the code. Uh, he didn't, they, I don't know, he, she, they didn't really give the code for um, for the, um, for the, how they got the product, but I'm assuming it's either using get product or maybe um, querying the product's data set. Um, that's also another note. If you're posting to the forum, it's good to give the whole context because sometimes that can give a little more information as to why uh, you have a specific error. Uh, but basically, um, so they're using the product.media items, and they are mapping the media items because it's an array, and basically creating a new object. Um, OK, so they're, um, they're using the index basically to create unique IDs for the um, individual media items so that when they pass it to the repeater, then it will be, uh, it will actually work with the repeater because in a Wix repeater, each one has to have a unique ID that is a string. Uh, and media items might not have that built in, so you have to add it in. Uh, other ways to do this would be to use uh, UUID. That's a package that you can install here. Uh, so you can install an NPM package called UUID. Um, this is what I do when I'm not lazy. I'll show you in a moment what I do when I'm lazy. Um, so that could be this. And then you just uh, have, oh, they have instructions here. I always copy from the instructions because um, I want to use the version 4. So import v4 like that. And then what you can do here is just change this to uh, UU, UUID like that. Yeah, and that will create a random string that's like a long randomized ID. Uh, again, that's not what I think the error is here, but just uh, in, for talking about creating IDs, you can also uh, do something like um, math dot uh, floor math dot random and then like times 1000 and then like or no sorry a lot more than a thousand and then not to string let's say that's another way i think but i think uh harry's solution is also fine um because there will only be each each index will be unique so yeah let's just go back to what harry had there uh, cool. 
Yeah, so I don't see anything that looks very wrong here. Uh, let's see what the error was again. Property map does not exist on media item. So what I would do is um, we're going to go to the Velo documentation. So let's search for. I'm trying to find something that would have the product. Let's see, product. Hmm. Let's see if I can find the get product. Cool. So this returns a product, and we see here media items. By the way, it does have an ID, so you could have just used that probably. Um, media items. Property map does not exist on type media item. map does not exist on type media item. Hmm. I'm trying to decide how hardcore I want to go because I could install Wix stores and try this out and try and replicate the exact same error. Uh, let's do that. So I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, and you know, once you start debugging, <laughs> It's very hard to stop because you really, really want to solve the issue. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, where is the whole app thing here? Add apps. Let's add the Wix stories. Let me tell a joke. This is actually a great uh, time for you to do a few things. So first of all, if you're liking the video, you can like it. And if you really like the video and you want to see more stuff just like this, uh, then you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And there'll be one or two videos uh, about Velo, about Wix weekly. Um, yeah, and you can also leave a comment if you have any questions or comments. Uh, and I might just tell you to go and put it on the forum, so you can go ahead and do that too. Uh, okay, so here we have product page. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the get product method. So I'm going to say const product equals uh, product page dot get product which may be a promise. So what I'm going to do is wrap this in an asynchronous function. You zoom back in. And this is going to be um, get media items and put this in here. So wait. And now what we can do is put the code from uh, put the code from our examples. So that would be this, this on this page. And we don't. I'm not going to populate the repeater, um, but I will just. Um, I will get rid of this outer function. And I'm just going to focus on the map because that was where we're having the issue. Cool. Wow. Property map does not exist on type media items. OK, so that's the error that they were having. Uh, and what I'm going to do first is I am going to say const 
um, media. So let's have let's do console dot log product, and I'm also going to do console dot log media data because um, just because you have a type error, so this is an error that's called a type error. Uh, it means that something is not matching in terms of the type. Um, so it could be that something's a string and you're treating it like a number. It could be something is an array and you're treating it like a string. Um, or it could be a type that's defined uh, by Wix uh, or by some other creator of some kind of code uh, package. So here, this media item type is a type that's defined by Wix. And it says that map doesn't exist on it. And not always a, an error like this. Like, let me rephrase that sentence because it came out really bad. Uh, having an error like this does not always mean that your code won't compile and run. Okay, it could just be kind of like a red flag, but it's the code might still run correctly. Um, so that's something that's worth checking. Uh, so I'm going to run this function, get media items. Now let's just go into preview mode and see what happens here. Uh, index dot to string is not a function. Interesting. Try that in a second. Okay, so here we have the media items, and it's quite clear that um, it's quite clear that this is an array. So theoretically, it should behave like an array. Um, you know, that would be that would make sense. Um, so let's start with the to string. Why is that not working? Index dot to string. That might be linked to this error that we're having here with the property map does not exist on type media item. Uh, cool. So how can we solve this? Let me try. Uh, what I'm going to try is to try and spread media items into an array and see if that works. So I'm going to say const media items equals to product dot media items. And this I'm going to spread in. Oh, yeah. Wait, why did you do this? <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Uh, I don't. That's very, very interesting. And I'm, I feel like this is something that I might have done before. Um, uh, so can we even run it through a for loop? What can we do with those media items to... Let's try this. First media item equals product dot media items zero. Let's see if that works. And I'll just add here console dot log first media item. And let's go into preview mode. That worked. Uh, so what we could do, and this is like the hackiest thing in the world, and it really should not be like this. Um, we could loop through the media items. Or let's see if for each exists on it. Not for each. No, for each doesn't work on it. Uh, but loop should work. We can tap into those indexes. So what I could do is I can create, I can say let media items equals an empty array and then we'll say for let i equal zero i is smaller than i hope this works products product dot media items dot length 
property design. Huh. Wow. Media item. Media. Media item. So we can't tap into the length property either. Um, okay, what I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to put the number 10 here. Um, and then I++, plus plus, just to see if this direction is going to work at all. And then we'll just say that media items I equals to product dot media items i and then here uh, for your media data we'll do instead of uh, mapping product dot media items you can just map this media items which is going to be an array um, and then we can take a look index dot to string Oh, this needs to be capitalized, by the way. OK, cool. So let's try this out. Go into preview mode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have a few empty. <laughs> we have a few empty ones here. Um, so we could add like a condition that let's say, you know, if you know, if this is empty, if one of these fields is empty, then don't push it to the array, and that would solve that issue. Uh, the question is how we can know um, how many media items there are in total. Uh, if we can't use the dot length property on it, um, I'd have to think about that. I don't know. I, uh, I'm sure there is some kind of workaround. Um, if I dig deep into MDN and different kind of array slash object properties that we can maybe extrapolate from this thing. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty weird, uh, Harry. So don't feel too bad that uh, <laughs> that you were having that issue. Um, but this is could be sort of solution for that. I'm just going to make sure that So I hope this helps uh, at least temporarily. Um, and I'm going to move on to uh, one last question for today. Uh, so let's take a look and see what else we have here in the forum. Let's see, hopefully a quick one. Uh, creating contacts with custom forms. OK, cool. I'm trying to create a way to send triggered emails uh, thanks to a video from the Wix Wiggly YouTube page. But for some reason, I cannot. I don't know if you guys hear the siren or not. But I took a pause just to <laughs> welcome to New York City. Um, OK, I cannot have the form submit contacts onto Wix. Each time I press submit button on my published site, it says that no new contact was created and the new contact is equal to false. I used the code from this awesome video tutorial. Thank you very much, Jeremiah. OK, so OK, Jeremiah, next time, please do provide a code snippet. Not only, I mean, the screenshot is helpful very much, uh, but um, 
yeah, it would be also helpful to have the code snippet if I wanted to play around with it. Um, let's see what's going on here. So you get the contact info. Um, teammates team name. Are those properties? Let's see what's happening. True email submit video. For some reason I have submit contacts. Each time I press the submit button on the site, it says that no new contact was created. And new contact is equal to false. New contact. Um, well, I do see here that in this picture. Ah. Ah, OK. So. Um, Cool. So this new contact equal to false, I think that's only an indicator if this contact that you use the append or create contact for. Uh, so there's this, um, the method that we're using here is called append or create contact. So let's go into the documentation. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so it returns promise contact. And uh, is, are we still in the right one? Let's create contact. That's not what we want. We want and cool. So if you take a look. Over here in the return, interesting. So it actually is not in the documentation, uh, which I can see why that might be confusing. But I'll tell you what I think is that, so this promise resolves to the contact ID and identity type of the, uh, of the contact. So if you're getting that back, that means that this promise was resolved successfully. That means that you either appended or you created a contact. Uh, what I understand that new, uh, sorry, the new contact field to be, uh, again, because there's no documentation here, I understand that to be uh, whether this contact is a new contact or you appended information to an existing contact. So try and take that within the context of what you're doing and see if that makes sense. Uh, one thing that I will note is that if you are um, in a session or logged in or somehow Wix manages to identify your current contact, so like let's say you're testing your site with the same user and you keep on filling out this form again and again, or you're logged in as a member and you're testing out this form. So that means you already have a contact that exists. And every time you fill out the form again, or you try this again, Wix will just take the information and append it to your existing contact and not really create a new contact. So when you're testing this out, uh, you'll want to try and test it out in uh, incognito mode uh, in a new session. And the other thing that you can try and do is to move the actual append or create contact function to the back end. Uh, and that can also prevent situations where um, contacts are appended where you actually want them to be created. Um, so that is my two cents on what's going on here. Because overall, um, I don't see where you're handling this resolved contact, where you're passing it into the email. Uh, just note that you would have to do that within this dot then um, uh, method. Uh, like right in, in right over here, that's where you'd have to send that email, or you can change this to async await, which I do advise, uh, which would make that all a lot simpler. So, yeah, that's uh, that's what I think is going on here, uh, Jeremiah. Thank you for supporting the channel, uh, and yeah, I really appreciate uh, your feedback and you posting this to uh, the forum. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to wrap up here. Um, 
I think three will be good for today. I'll, I'll probably take a look at some of the other posts um, kind of in my own time, uh, maybe over the weekend. Um, yeah, so let me know what you think about a video like this. Does it help um, follow along and see other people's struggles? I mean, obviously, this video will help, um, you know, uh, Desiree, Harry, and Jeremiah, but I think uh, I'm curious if it'll help uh, other viewers as well. So if you like this kind of video, give it a thumbs up, give it a comment, let me know. Uh, and there'll be another video like this uh, next week or the week after. So do let me know uh, and post to the forum, post to our uh, suggestions. So you can always go to thewixwiz.com uh, slash YouTube. Uh, if you're not struggling with something on your website, but you just happen to have an idea for a video that you think would be cool, you can go, you could post it over here, make a suggestion, you can vote up other people's suggestions. And yeah, if, if a video gets suggested enough, then I'd go ahead and make it. Uh, so thanks, uh, as always, for watching, and I will see you next time.